Hey friends, it's Teresa here and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm on the Tracy Reed blog today sharing a uh, simple, three simple and very easy ways to use digital alphabets in your hybrid scrapbook layouts. And so I'm working specifically with the Digital Alphabetes Volume 2 and Volume 4 from the Tracy Reed Design Shop. And I'm also working with the alphabets from the digital collection in the A Flutter Kit and uh, also all of the embellishments and pattern papers will be from the A Flutter Kit as well. So this is the uh, the digital version of the layout that I shared in the blog post and that we're going to be talking about in today's video. And this is what it looks like as I design it in Photoshop. And then I print out the background layers and the embellishments by themselves. And so I wanted to just uh, credit the creative team for Tracy Reed Designs because we had a really fun discussion in our private group about what are some fun ways to use digital alphabets when you're a hybrid scrapbooker. And so there were some fun ideas and you can see what the rest of the digital team has done with the alphabeties collections. I'll put a link to that blog post down below so you can see some of their wonderful ideas. And then these are some of the go-to kind of techniques that I use a lot with the digital alphabets and digital stamps. And so first off, I'll just walk you around the layout a little bit. I'm going to hide all the layers for a moment and I'll show you the background what it looks like all by itself. So let's turn all of these on. This is one of the pattern papers and I'll tell you a quick trick that I do to to make it look blended out. It's not an it's not an officially, you know, sanctioned method, but it works. Uh, I just use the eraser tool and uh, create a a little, um, I just erase parts of it with different opacities. And then I also added, this is an element uh, called a folded placemat or something to that effect. And I liked it because it uses black on white. And so I wanted it to sort of blend out into the blue so I softened the edges as well, uh, use, again, using the eraser tool with that. Um, another thing I used is this color wash. And so uh, on this side, it's housed behind the title word. And on the other side, it's housed behind the um, quote for the layout. I used some of these adorable enamel dot scatters. Uh, those appear in several places. I also used the string uh, going across a couple of places and the little digital doily. And so that's on the left-hand side. And then let me show you the right-hand side. Again, the blue pattern paper and blend it out a little bit. The butterfly pattern paper also, uh, with the edges softened, the pink color wash, the scatters, the string, and the doily. And so that's the base for my design. And then the, the first way that I'll show you how to use your digital alphabets is this quote. And so this quote is from Ralph Waldo Emerson, The Earth Laughs in Spring. And I liked it because it has, it has two meanings, I feel like. Um, one, it sounds like it's saying 
the the earth laughs when it's springtime. They also sounds like it's saying that the earth laughs sounding like spring or as if it were spring. And I kind of took inspiration from that. When it, this, this page is something that I consider an affirmation page. Um, it's a scrapbook layout about myself, for myself, to remind myself of what are some of the things that I want to focus on and think about for the month of May. And so then the, the supporting elements on the page, you'll see they will uh, feature some of the spring items that are spring vibes that I'm looking to uh, focus on for this month. So let me show you how I uh, created this pretty simply. And so let's go into that product folder. Let me pull it up here, products, alphabetties, and this is volume two. And so when you look in here, you see all of the alphabets and there's a couple of other little items, um, a period, a question mark, a comma, and there's also an outline version, which is really cool. And both of these uh, include brushes, but uh, for the purposes, well, let's see, we can do, we can do this one of two ways. You can open all of the alphabets and load them into a stack in Photoshop or you can uh, load them as a brush and so let's load these as a brush and so what you're going to do is go into your brush tool over here on the far left hand side make sure you're clicked on the top tool which is the brush tool and you will see up in here a little drop down menu and this is where you can load all of your brushes. They're typically an ABR file in the product folder. And this is pretty much the only thing that they will do. They allow you to add in all of the stamps that are included. That's the wildflower set. And we're in the alphabeties too. And so when you click on the A, um, it lets you put the A down. Okay, so when you go and grab that A, it will <clears throat> show you that on the screen. I'm going to add another, a different layer and put this on its own layer. And that way you can manipulate it and do things with it that you need. You can move it around and adjust the sizing and things like that. And so I'm gonna just go off of the layout here and click that down for you. Now you'll notice that I have it in the color of black and um, you can adjust the opacity on that. You can also adjust the size and the size is sort of automatically set for you uh, at 386 pixels. Um, so we can make that smaller if we want to, and let's get it down to the size that I used. That's pretty close. Now, if you want to use a different color, then select a different color, click on that, uh, color picker, and then I just go in and pick a darker color in the product. So there's a dark green here on the edge of this enamel dot. So that sounds good. I click that one. I'm going to hit OK. And then voila, you've got an A. And you can do that going down all of the, um, going down all of the alphabets themselves. So if you want to spell and, then uh, let's, Get that back down to the size we want. A, N, and D. Just remember what size you were putting, using, What size? remember what size you were using so that you can be 
fairly consistent unless you want a different different sizes there so we just created an and and now if you click on the move tool we've got all of this on the same layer you can move it around and do whatever you need to with it um, so that's how I created this uh, quote here and in the in the process video at the end you'll see me add the um, this was by Ralph when while Ralph Waldo Emerson and you'll see me add his name at the bottom with ink okay um, so that's that cute little item let's create in a similar way let's create these little hearts Oh, that's a photo um, and so what I wanted was let me zoom back out what I wanted was to create these little embellishments with words on them and so you can add uh, digital alphabets to create words on elements within the collection so I use those little hearts um, let me go into the F letter collection and see what other ideas you could add um, you could add a little saying to this little circle bit here you could add something inside your frame if you wanted to um, you could add something to the doily uh, or to the color wash like we just did you could add a little saying to the washi tapes you could add your journaling uh, directly onto your tags by using uh, digital alphabets instead of typing so with this one this has been uh, merged down. It's the yellow heart with the word sun on top. So let me uh, go off the page again and show you how I did that. So first off, let's open that little yellow heart. Let me go back into the Flutter collection. I think that's in the, the stickers. Let's find the stickers. Individual files. Yes, it is. All right, so open that up. And let's control A and control C to copy it right into our layout. I'm going to leave the size the same, but if you want to size it down a little bit, um, this is why it's so fun to work digitally before you print it out so that you can gauge whether the size is appropriate for your layout and you'll notice how um, I built these to fit on the hexagons and so that's that's how I gauged whether the size was appropriate or not um, so for this embellishment I've used the Alphabetes volume 4 and I'm going to go back into the brush tool I've already loaded this into my brushes, Alphabetes 4. So let me go in here. This one has two versions of the letter. Let me show you with the A. And then the, uh, I think Tracy called it the messy A. And it, it looks like you stamped it with a little wood block stamp. But I'm going to use the uh, not wood block <laughs> look. And so let me just grab the S here. And we'll create the word sun. And this is just a fun way to do kind of a bur uh, bullet, bullet journaling kind of thing here. You can, of course again adjust the sizes of this if you just want an s on there um, but i'm going to leave it as it is 62 pixels 
because this is a pretty small little thing. Oh wait, let's do a new layer. Okay, that's better. There's probably a little S under there now. Yep, <laughs> it's underneath. That's fine. Uh, we can hit undo, undo new layer, undo brush tool. Okay, now let's add our layer back in and go back into the brush tool. The S is already there. Um, where did you go, Bernadette? <laughs> um, okay, we're going to build it off of the heart, and then we'll just move it back on there. I'm not sure what's happening there. Um, <laughs> that's okay. Here's the U. And then the last letter is our little N. And let me squish that over. There we go. And then now you can go into the Move tool and move that over top of the heart. Let's see here. Where's that yellow heart? Aha. Uh -huh. That's why it's not showing, because sun needs to be on top. There. And the, the original embellishment I did, I used black for those letters. And, of course, these are showing in green, and that's fine. And then, um, so if you don't want this S there, uh, a quick little tool is to just take your eraser, make sure you're on that layer, and just take your eraser tool and boom, it's gone. And then you can uh, highlight both of these layers, right click and merge layers and it'll all read as one embellishment now. Um, so that's a, a second way. A third way, I, <laughs> I saw this little tiny heart in the, the um, Alpha Bitties volume four it is way down here at the bottom of the alphabet and it just got squeezed in here and it's so cute isn't that adorable you can just add the tiniest little heart on your digital embellishments and so there is a messy heart you can put a messy heart on there let's Let's do that in white. I did it in white on some of them, and I did it in, looks like there's green on that one, red on that one, and so there, that just makes the cutest little heart on there. Let's undo that. Um, so that was a, a fun little, little addition. The last way that I wanted to show you is my main title which is hello may and so these were created using the um the digital alphabets in the a flutter collection and these are individual pngs within the collection so there's not an abr file for those and so here's how we're going to load those into a stack what, a, what that does is it allows you to open all of the alphabets into one tab in Photoshop, and then you can bring in the letters that you need. So um, let me get my bearings here. What we're going to do is we're going to go to, oh my goodness, I seem to have forgotten <laughs> what tab it's under. We want, what do we want? We want load. Um, we're gonna go to automate. That, that took me a minute. No, not, not automate, we're gonna go to scripts. <laughs> and we're gonna click load files into stack. And this is where you can pull in whatever it is that you wanna bring into one tab and so i do this for embellishments i do this for pattern papers i do this for the traveler's notebook papers and the signatures 
and you can also of course do this with the alphabets so these alphabets came in five different colors they came in a blue polka dot they came in a green polka dot and orange pink and yellow so I used the pink and what I did was I just grabbed all of them I'm pressing the shift key I'm on a PC and highlighting all of them and then I didn't need the the extra punctuation so I'm pressing the control key now and unhighlighting the alphabets that I don't need and since you already know what words you're creating you can just select the letters that you need so we're doing hello may we can do the a the e the h the l the m the o and the y hello may and then click ok and it will add those you can double check here if you need to add more or if you want to add a different color you can go in and add the green ones if you want. Uh, let's do May 6. And then they all show up here. Click OK. And it will chug. Photoshop will chug for a minute while it opens all of these letters in this one tab. I love this because... Then what we're going to do after it's done loading all of these is we're going to copy paste all of them into our project canvas and then we'll have them readily available all at once. So let me scroll down here. I think it's done. They're all in here. So let me uh, click the shift button and highlight all of the layers and then you can take them like this and drag them into the the canvas or you can hit control a control c and then we're gonna drop them in here whoops i used the orange <laughs> i used the orange letters i did make mine a little bit bigger you can get away with that sometimes just a little bit so let me go ahead i just make sure uh click on those layers themselves and uh, hit the move tool click on the corner make sure your aspect ratio is locked and then just bump them up a little bit all right it only brought in the a <laughs> So let's, um, the other way <laughs> is to right click on those layers, all of them highlighted, hit duplicate layers, and it will bring up this duplicate box. And we're going to select our original canvas that we're working in and click OK. And it will copy those right over here for you. They'll be somewhere on the page. Let me zoom out and we'll find them where did they go where did you go Bernadette <laughs> they're probably hiding under here let's see yep there they are let's drag those to the top of our layers they'll be able to see them I still don't see them. There they are. They're up there in the corner. Okay. So let's move these over here now. I'm going to delete that one off of there. And let me zoom back in so you can see a little bit better. And then again, let me make sure that I've selected all of those. Do not merge those down yet into one layer. We'll do that once we're ready to add our stroke around it. So let me just bump these up a little bit. There we go. And then at this stage, you can move them around and duplicate them to create the word you need. So let me just do that real quick. 
space them out however you want. Place them wherever you want. Um, remember to duplicate the ones that you need two of. And let's just move the 06. That was a bonus. And so once you have what you want in place, I'm going to scrunch that hello and just work with the May. Um, now, obviously, I did this on two separate, two separate layers for one to create the hello and one to create the May. Um, but you can put them on the same layer and create one embellishment. Um, so let me show you that way. And I'm going to um, pull this into another canvas. Let's duplicate this onto a new canvas. Okie dokie. Here they are. And let's just zoom in again so you can see it better. And so lay out your words the way you want it. This makes it a little bit easier for the silhouette to cut it out and makes it a little less uh, cluttery on your layout, I think. So let's add the May. And uh, you can have them touch if you want. I'm choosing to leave a little bit of space between each letter. Now... Move that up a little bit. Now what we're going to do to make them all one piece, first off, we're going to select all of these and merge the layers. Okay, and then let's add a layer underneath it. Doesn't matter what size the layer underneath it is. Um, so that gives us, that creates one, one element. And then we're going to add the stroke to the background, and this is what's going to turn it all into one piece. Uh, so my uh, sh a stroke is basically an outline that uh, can join an element, can join several elements together, just like this, or you can do it individually. I wanted this to kind of look like it was floating on a cloud, so I I gave it a very light blue from the collection. And it also contrasts with the alphabets themselves. And it made for a cute vellum. I printed this all out on vellum. I uh, adjusted the size here underneath structure and size. So this little number will go up and down depending on how big or how small you want it. That's a matter of personal taste. Notice how the smaller you go, it creates little little holes here where the letters don't aren't close enough together. And that's fine. The silhouette will pick that up and will create those little gaps for you. This is the position of this stroke is on the outside. If you click the inside, it looks completely different. And if you center it, it also looks a little bit different, but um, I typically use the outside. That's the one I use most. Um, and then the opacity is how how see-through is that stroke. Um, so not transparent at all. Looks like that. It looks um, kind of like a, a marshmallow. <laughs> but I was going for clouds. So again, I left it slightly opaque and printed it on vellum. The fill type is color. Now, you can fill that in with, fill your stroke in with a pattern paper. And if you click pattern, it will, um, it will let you add a pattern to that. You could, in theory, add one of the patterns from the collection, but I think that's a whole nother a tutorial for a whole nother day. So we've created that one and that's how it looks. Just creating one entire uh, 
single embellishment there, one title, versus the two words that I had done. So that is basically three easy ways to use uh, digital alphabets in your hybrid scrapbook layouts. I'm going to switch over to my desktop and we'll see the process for pulling all of this together. Okay, so I've got everything printed out. I did print out the Hello May and these little embellished hearts on vellum and then the two photos I printed on photo paper and everything else is printed on matte photo paper. You could, of course, also use matte uh, plain white cardstock as well. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is adhere the little uh, hearts to the background uh, hexagons. And I will, I do change it up a little bit. I think I printed out one extra one. I added one after creating it in creating the canvas in Photoshop. And, um, and then I also ended up changing the order of the hexagons a little bit, and that's fine. Once I get those adhered down, I'm gonna uh, just quickly layer on those hexagons and sort of lightly figure out where they're gonna go on the physical layout. I am referring back to the guide on the the digital canvas on my computer as I'm doing this just to help me place everything and it does take me just a little just a little minute here <laughs> to get these all straight onto the page and then I'll go back and adhere them with my dry with my dry adhesive runner <laughs> I, my brain was wanting to say dry eraser. Um, so <laughs> just mostly what I'm trying to figure out is um, how to space out the colors of the hexagons and also the little hearts versus the butterflies, uh, not butterflies, the, the little stamped hearts versus the vellum hearts. I apparently cannot speak today. <laughs> so I got that all figured out and I'm just gonna finalize all of this, adhere them all down. And that actually is pretty much the background of the page. And I'm loving the way it looks. I love how just a little bit of the butterfly paper is showing behind these hexagons and, uh, the doily is the doilies are going to make a great little background to sort of ground the hello may into place and so that goes down pretty quickly and then once i have these adhere down adhered my next step will be to trim the edges here some of them went off the page that was an intentional design choice and after that, um, you'll notice I already have these pages punched to where they're going into my album. I'm using a life crafted album. So the individual page size here is eight and a, eight and a quarter inches tall by seven inches wide. I went ahead and adhered down my photos and then I wrote in my journaling. I love to include handwriting on all of the layouts that I do somewhere. And so the journaling is a great spot. I did. I then decided to make a little pocket for the journaling. And this is the easiest way to make a pocket. Um, fold a spare piece of paper over your tag, leave a little bit extra on each side and fold it over add adhesive to those folded edges and also to the bottom of your piece of paper. Adhere it to the back of the photo or the element that you're tucking that behind and then you have yourself a little pocket 
for your tag. I'm going to stamp my date here and just use a Recollections Roller Date Stamp. I love this one. It goes to 2024 and um, lets you kind of pick your, your dates and all that. So that's a good tool. <laughs> I'm addicted to Roller Date Stamps. And then I'm going to go through, these are just a few of the stickers and Ellie's that are included in the Aflutter kit. And I'm just going to go through and look for a few things that might be useful. In particular, I need a label for my date. There happened to be one pink label. So that was Kismet. <laughs> and then I'm going to add a little uh, word strip to that, the word arrow and one of the butterflies as well. Went ahead and stamped that down. Notice how I stamped it off to the right hand side a little bit and the butterfly is gonna cover that blank space just a little bit. And I loved the word strip that says big smiles. I just wanted to say I captured photos of myself <laughs> laughing and they feel like some of the most awkward photos that I've ever taken of myself, but then um, I realized that I need to have more photos like that in my albums, and so this is a challenge to you to take a photo of yourself laughing and make sure to include those in your albums. Uh, once I've got the little date and all that squared away, I'm going to work here on the Hello May so I mentioned uh, hiding the adhesive, these little flower, these little flower embellishments do a great job of hiding that little adhesive, holding that down. And also the doilies were strategically placed. They now look like they're actually stitching the, the words into place. It's a little, uh, a little digital play there and so with the May there's the little yellow flower at the bottom and the pink flower at the top. I considered adding a couple of more things to the layout but it really feels done and all I'm going to do left over is uh, credit the author for the quote and I'm going to grab a little bit of white twine to add to the tag just so that it has a little pull, a little pull tag there. I just, this is my go-to way to do this. Just double it up, thread it through the tag, and then fold it over and staple that in place. And the other great thing is by uh, putting this in the album outside of a page protector, then the viewer can actually uh, take that out without having to ruin your page protectors. And it makes that a the interactive elements a little bit easier to play around with. I'm going to add this to my album now and let you see the finished layout. Thank you so much for watching. I will have product links, blog links, and all the good things like that linked down below for you. And I will see you back here again very soon. Bye-bye.